Hi, this is Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and continuing on with our mold making series, uh, we're going to talk about tonight is how to figure out what size mold base you need, all right? And that's very important because the mold base frame uh, is a big part of your material expense. There's three things that go into the building and injection mold as far as the cost go, your material cost, your design cost, and your labor cost. At least that's the way it worked for me. So we're still working with this very simple plastic box, all right? This, uh, container. That's a great way to learn. And a couple things that uh, come in handy uh, for this process is to also, also, you know, know what you're quoting and this DME catalog. Now, I took mine and unbound it so I could put it into a loose leaf binder, but we're going to use this uh, tonight for this particular lesson. So, this is about 15 minutes long. I'll show you what I would do today if somebody walked into my office and said, Phil, uh, you have this tool and die shop. How much for a two cavity mold to build this box? Keep it cheap. Well, this is how I did it. I had to lay the mold base out quickly, and I did. A, I spent a little more time on this because it's for a video presentation, but you'll see the, the thought process. All right, so I've used this uh, very simple box in uh, several of my lessons because it's just a great example of a, a plastic part. Right? So if we take a look at this and measure it, I think we're looking at about a three by three inch plastic box. It's actually two and seven eighths. We'll just call it three by three. So for the sake of estimating. So that's what we're going to do here. I got to give this customer a quick estimate. Well, besides the labor to build the cavity and core, one of my biggest expenses is going to be the mold base. Uh, there's a lot of steel there. And uh, for those of you from the machining world, um, that's why there's a lot of hoists and cranes in a tool and die shop. All right. Uh, because the mold base is way so much. So the first thing I'm going to do is in the center of my paper, and I'm going to use a magic marker for this. I normally would not use a magic marker for a quick layout, and I'm going to spend a lot more time on this than I normally do for a quick quote. But this is why I always kept a drafting table in my office or nearby, just to do a quick layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a one inch diameter circle right in the middle of the page. And that represents the sprue bushing. That's kind of where the, not kind of, that's where the plastic's going to come into the mold, all right? So uh, that hole is going to fill with plastic and, and go to our parts. Now, a simple way to do this, and this comes from uh, some experience here, some perspective, I need some room to get a runner in here and a gate. I don't want to be quite that tight. Somewhere about an inch or so away, because don't forget I've got a cavity wall that's going to be cut in too, so I need some strength there. So somewhere about that would look about right and let's make sure we're fairly centered here yeah so just to keep things simple I'm just gonna draw a quick line around this box now what if I didn't have the part well I would just draw take a minute and draw a three inch by three inch square imagine that all right so uh, about one inch out just a little over an inch we'll do the same thing on the other side Again, I'm spending a little more time with this for uh, purposes of uh, illustration than I normally would for a quick quote, but I want you to see what I'm doing here. So I need to kind of come up with how big is this mold base going to be so I know how much steel to either buy or if I want to just buy the mold base right off the shelf from a company like DME, I can. All right, so now I've got, I've got these two cavities and why don't I just build a single cavity? That's a different subject, all right? You'll usually find you're better off at least building two cavities of anything, or one of each. But you don't usually just want to do one cavity mold unless it's some huge part. Then we get into a hot runner system and different ways to do that. But for a simple part like this, you can almost build two parts for the price of one. So we're going to put a runner in here. And I normally would not draw that if I was quoting it. And then we'll end up with a, some sort of a gate to get into the, to the cavities. Now I got to kind of eyeball what's the what is the uh, overall uh, size of this mold base. Well, from experience, you know, we need room for some leader pins out here, some water lines. So I'm just going to go with uh, what if I went by? Uh, let's go with six inches this way. Let's see, is that six? I'm sorry. From center line, let's go with five inches that way five inches that way okay and then from center line I'm gonna come out about uh, let's go with seven inches Let's 
what that looks like. Again, this is a quick sketch here. So far, I'm liking it. Looks about appropriate. And here's why. We've got a lot of extra space out here. Well, don't forget, these are cavities. They're going to be, you know, whatever this depth is, inch and three quarter deep. So we need some strength on the outside of this mold to hold that mold pressure in. <clears throat> so. The next thing is, on that size mold base, I'm sure we're going to have about uh, at least one inch diameter leader pins, if not bigger. And now I need to get those in, but the bushings will be a quarter inch wall, so uh, let's just call that uh, inch and a half inch, uh, inch and a half leader pins and bushings out here. And just eyeballing those in. All right. And that is a pretty appropriate mold base size for that part, all right? Now, the trick is to have yourself this handy book from the uh, DME company, Detroit Mold Engineering. Uh, PCS out of Pittsburgh does a similar thing. These catalogs are kind of hard to get a hold of now, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know how well this is showing up on the video because of glare, but I'll, I'll copy this page and put it in the video while I'm talking about it. So. What I did, so if I if I were to take this quickly, what size mold base do I kind of have here, roughly? About 10, 10 by 14. So 10 by 14. Well, the cheater way to do this is just go into the DME catalog and find one of their mold bases. They have all different sizes, but here's a 10 and 7 eighths by 14. That'll work. Now, if I wanted to get a little narrower than that 10 and 7 eighths, 9 and 7 eighths by 16, so I'm getting a lot wider to get the shorter width. So uh, I think 9 and 7 eighths by 20, 10 and 7 eighths by 12, that's too short. So we end up with a happy medium, 10 and 7 eighths by 14. So that's the first step. I know I'm going to end up with a 10 and 7 eighths by 14 mold base and the beauty of that is god bless dme company and i'll get let's show this sheet uh i'll scan it is they give me all the dimensions for the uh, leader pins return pins all the stuff that goes into building a mold base so um that's a great way to get your either you can copy it or have your designer do it just take everything out of the dme catalog they did it for you or you can just order the mold base from dme so um that's the first step is we have, a, we have a mold base size now, 10 and 7 eighths by 14. We can get a direct quote from the DME company. Uh, they used to have the price list in the catalog. They don't do that anymore. You know, global competition, that changed everything. So uh, I, I had to sign up, actually. I tried to do it, and then I'm on a 24-hour wait list to get in or something. So, uh, But I'll at least know what this thing costs for quote purposes. Now the next step is, how thick are these plates? I need an A plate and a B plate. So uh, we'll pause this for a second. Let me flip the paper over and uh, I'll give you a good idea of uh, kind of an estimate of uh, we've got the overall uh, uh, length and width, how thick. All right, so let's talk about how thick of the, how will this material be? Well, let's take a magic marker and draw a line right across the paper. That's my parting line. And the parting line is where the two halves of the mold meet to form this part, all right? So I wanna keep this, my customer said, you know, I already talked him into a two cavity mold, but he wants this done cheaply, okay? So the way I think I would quote this mold, I'm gonna come down here and draw the B plate. Something around two inches thick I think would work. And then I, what I would do is uh, the cavity plate, I'm going to go one, two, three, probably about four inches thick. 
And let me show you what I'm doing here. And for those of you in a mold design class right now, your professor might be having a heart attack or an aneurysm right now. But this is just experience. This is the way we did it, all right? Now let's just draw this part on there roughly, okay? And I'll tell you how I would build this mold. All right, let's just draw, pretend this is a section view through the mold. Something like that, okay? Here's how I would do it. I would order this plate solid P20. They'll cut the clamp slots in it, or I will. That'll hold it to the front half of the mold, uh, the, the molding press. I would make this plate this thick, and we'll measure this in a minute, and then add a core in here. Uh, maybe not all the way through even, something like that. So what's the, what do I mean by that? Well, on the, the cavity side, I could just machine these two cavities in. On the core side, I don't want to machine all this steel away. So I would just have a flat plate, cut two pockets in it, and make two P20 cores up and put those in there like that. So this core insert would look like that. Your material is going to be cut, it's going to be formed right around that core. And now I've got room still to get uh, probably a water line into this core. And there probably a couple bubblers. We'll talk about that in other lessons. Get some water up in here. I've got room to get some uh, water around this cavity. And there's still room for a sprue bushing. So I like that. So what did I end up with here? Well, let's get an idea. Again, I just sketched it. Uh, my B plate, I've decided, is going to be about two inches thick. And my A plate, about four inches thick. Back to the DME bar. What's the standard sizes for that size mold base? Well, again, I'll have to scan this in. Uh, a plate, I'm looking for about four inches. They have three and seven eighths. So we're gonna change that to three and seven eighths. That's a standard size. They probably take four inch material and grind it, right? And then uh, two, uh, I'm looking for about two inches on the B plate for that size mold base. Say two inches. They have inch and seven eighths or two and three eighths. Yeah, let's go with the inch and seven eighths. So I end up with inch and seven eighths. So now between the length and the width, the A and the B plate thickness, A plate, B plate, I can generate a catalog number and get a quote from DME. I can have them quote the uh, injection mold uh, for me, the, the, uh, the mold base, or I can just call my guy to builds my steel and now realizing I'm going to have to square all this stuff, blanch or grind this stuff, but we'll keep this, you might say, well, Phil, why don't we just use the 10 and 7 eighths? Why don't you just make that 11 by 14? I could, but all these numbers work for their mold base. The perspective is correct. So you just stick with what, you, what somebody already did, right? Why reinvent the wheel? Now, are there specialty mold bases? You bet. But in this case, this is a simple mold base and uh, we can get this ordered or build it ourselves right from a DME catalog. Now we have a quote. So that's it. Uh, the DME catalog is a big uh, advantage. You have to get one of those. It just saves you a lot of time. And um, Get a quote from them if you want to have them build it. But at least you'll know your steel sizes, your leader pin locations, your injector pin location, or not your injector, uh, your return pin locations. All that good stuff is provided. Don't reinvent the wheel. So I'm Phil Kerner. Thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll see you on the next one.